Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that there will be a release into this congregation right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, I pray that you bless this congregation right now. As we enter into your presence and we ask you to release Yes, you are the Lord. Oh, yes, you are the Lord. something with you from the first book of Samuel chapter 1 verse 9 through the 11th verse and since it's the word of God I'll be glad if you will all stand with me whilst we read from the word of God this moment shall we please stand as we read the word of God So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed Look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but I will give your male servant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. Amen. Lord, I pray that there will be a release this morning as we hear this message. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless this congregation this morning with your word that carries life and strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. This morning, I'm dealing with the subject, sowing. Last week, we were blessed with the ministry of Reverend Bismarck, as he shared about sowing, the importance of sowing. And when he said it, I went back and looked at the scriptures, and I was so surprised. Each time that the word sowing is used, it is interchanged with the word spam. And in fact, the root meaning of the word sowing is, is sperma. When a man and a woman come together, the product... And every time that we live in this world, our whole life, our whole, in fact, your whole life is centered around sowing. What you sow is what you reap. Amen. If you walk down the street or walk to church every Sunday morning with a, a frowned face, you don't talk to nobody. You don't make friends with nobody. It is a seed you are sowing and obviously you will not make friends. Amen? 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 Our whole life in this world is centered around sowing and reaping. Whether you like it or not, when your mother sent you to school, you were sowing. We have kids 
When they went to school, they thought they were cheating somebody. When the parents were paying the school fees, he or she decided not to go to school. And he became a truant. Along the line, that person is paying for. Because that was the seed he sold. Amen. Amen. And most of you, the married ones sitting here, whose marriage is peaceful, is because you sowed a good seed. Amen? Amen? If you treat your wife in, or your spouse in a bad way, you are sowing a seed. And that is what you will reap. Amen? If you want to have a successful marriage, then begin to sow the right seed. Amen. You know, the, the, the saying that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Amen. Amen. Your wife will be what you want her to be. Your husband will be what you want him to be. Amen. If you are always, whilst you are looking at your wife, your, you walk with your wife, you see only the, the, the ladies with the big hips. Instead of what you have, obviously, your mind is sowing a seed. Your mind is sowing a seed. And so at a certain point, you don't see what you have, how beautiful what you have is. Amen. So the whole life, that we live in this world is made up of sowing and reaping. Amen. No couple in this room can say that uh, I have children because I went to live in America and I was speaking to my wife over the phone and she became pregnant. It doesn't happen that way. You need to sow in order to reap. Hallelujah. And the Bible talks about Hannah. A lady who realized that every time she was going through difficult moments with her rival, and she went into the temple of God and cried out unto God and said, God, if you will give me a child, I will lend this child to you forever. And this child will stay in the house of God and serve God forever. Now, if you look at the lineage of uh, Elkanah, he wasn't part of the Levitical priesthood. So he didn't have the right to the priesthood office. But because Samuel's mother led him to the Lord, hallelujah, Samuel's mother led him to fight. As soon as the Bible says, when she had a baby, she had already made up her mind that this child belonged to God. She had already made up her mind, this child belonged to God. And so the Bible says, she waited till the child was old enough. I don't think he was even five years then. She sent him to the house of the Lord. And went to the priest and Eli and said, you remember when you made that prophetic utterance over my life? This is the result. And this child will stay in the house forever. Now read what God, the Bible says happened. When she sowed the seed. The word of God says. First Samuel 20, chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. And Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, 
the Lord give you descendants from this woman for the loan that was given to the Lord. Then they would go to their own home and the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says that when Elkanah and, and Hannah had given the child to God, they came back and presented the child to the man of God. And then Eli just laid his hand upon them and then said, May God replace this gift that you have given. That is the result of sowing. Amen. Amen. Any time that you sow, the Bible says that God will cause rains to fall upon your sowing and you will reap it. And the Bible says God blessed it, them with three boys and what? Two girls. Is that not it? Because they sowed. And Jesus said in John 12, 24, that there is no way you are going to harvest unless they're sowing. No way you are going to harvest unless they're sowing. Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much, much grain. Amen. When you are sowing your seed within in your hand, within your heart, within your life, it's a produce multiplied. Amen. In your hand, you only hold one corn. But within that thing, that tiny seed in your hand is a product of life that multiplies unto you. Amen. Amen. Amazingly, as I traveled, I got to a place and then somebody would tell me, Pastor, you don't know, I was a member of North Carnegie Church and you did this for me. And today, things I did many years ago that I never was looking for any reward, somebody was in need. And I was touched. And I helped the person. Not looking for any reward from the person. The person is gone. Maybe you folks didn't know. Just about, was it five years ago? A couple were in this church. They won the lottery. And a week to the time that they were supposed to travel, they had still not got their ticket. And if they don't get their ticket, they will lose it. So I met, he came to me and asked for prayer. And I said, listen, I, will, I have my money. And so I gave him almost $10,000 to buy the ticket for him, his wife, and three children. And they left and went to America. Till today, he never called me. He never wrote to me. I, I, I had his number. I used to call him. He cut off. But you see, he is not my source. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, if I tell you the many times I have reaped, you'll be surprised. Amen. 
And so when I did it for him, even though he didn't pay back, it's quite painful, right? I mean, $10,000. Paul could do something better. But I lost it. Hallelujah. And when I gave it to him, I, his promise, I mean, the swear he sat in my office and sweared he would pay that money was many. But one thing I have learned that no one can I give God. Nobody can I give God. He is always remained faithful. Amen. Amen. And my wife would testify. Sometimes she is amazed about the many things that God does in our lives. And one time she was sitting with me and she said, until I married you, I didn't know how easy it is to receive from God. So anytime I sow seed, I sow with one intention, looking to God, who is my blessings. Hallelujah. And now we read about another man, Cornelius. The Bible says that Cornelius sowed a seed. Hallelujah. You know, those of you who were here, at the beginning, I, when Pastor was tell, giving the testimony last week, then I remembered when we were going to roof our church building, I had gone to Holland, preached, and they gave me money. They wrote a check for me for $10,000. Mr. Boachi is here, he will remember. As soon as I came, I just brought the 10000 and said, use it to buy the roofing sheets for the church and I gave it after many years when I was building my house a lady went to Bawe I didn't know till today I still can't locate who the lady is I went to Bawe there was 1,000 bags of cement five trips of sand and I asked the brothers who, who brought it they said certain lady just came and dumped it here she said we should never mention who she is even they didn't know her actually the God you have is alive that is the message I brought to you Hallelujah. You don't worship a dead God. You worship a living God. And so what over seed you are planting today, thinking that it's a waste, since I came to tell you, you are planting a seed, and God is watering it, and at the right time, I tell you in the name of Jesus, it is going to what? Grow. Those you've done good things for and didn't reward you, don't get excited. God is not forgotten it. It's an eternal seed planted before him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some parents have children and your children will not even remember you. But I tell you what, one day a little kindness to somebody you don't know, God will raise that person and something will happen in your life. Because God, when you sow, it is never, never. In fact, Jesus explained it. He said, when you sow, it must die. Those are the moments you think nothing is happening. You know, when we were children, and we were not good farmers, you know, uh, a fisherman learning to farm. So when you plant the seed, the next day you go and dig it and see 
if it is growing. The only way you can let that seed grow is to plant it, leave it, and forget it, and water it. Hallelujah. And when your life is sowing today, some of you, you are doing so much for God. I mean, and you, you, you ask yourself, God, I've been doing all these things. Where is my reward? Listen through eternity. God is saying that your labor of love will never be forgotten. So the Bible says, so, hallelujah. Act of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 1 through 6. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household. He gave alms generously. To he the people. gave alms generously. That's what the Bible says. He gave alms generously. And prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? So he said to him, Your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before Did you God. hear what the Bible says? The Bible says Cornelius. Cornelius was not looking for reward. But God comes in and says, God, Cornelius, the prayer that you've been praying every day and the arms that you've been given every time has become a memorial in the presence of the Almighty God. Jesus. Sometimes you think, oh, Lord, I have been giving, giving, giving. I'm not seeing results. <laughs> Your bank is about to explode. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. No, a Christian had a dream and he went to heaven and he saw a whole bunch of parcels and he asked the angel what, 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 what is this he said these are the parcels of Christians who are still holding back they thought everything has been delayed so they've given up and because they are giving up the, the parcels are waiting don't give up don't quit. The kindness you are showing. I, I, I brought my testimony because I wanted you to know that not all the people you give to them will even appreciate what you've done. Hallelujah. But you are giving not to the person. You are giving not to man. You are giving us unto who? The Lord. And that is the truth. When you give, you give as unto the Lord. Cornelius, you're giving. The kindness you've been showing to people has become a memorial in the very sight of the Almighty God. When you took that little boy whose parents were not taking good care of him and you helped that boy and that boy finished school and even forgot you. And you said, oh Lord Jesus, after all what I did,
ask me, I'll tell you how many people I helped. And then when they go, they don't even pass by and say, Osofo, are you cool? But you see, the truth of the matter is, when God was using you, he was not making that person your response. Did you hear me? When God was using her, she wasn't going to be the tunnel through which the blessings will come. Some of those people, when they become the tunnel, the blessings may not come properly. Hallelujah. But God has a plan for your life. And when those people walk out of the way, they make way for the grace of God to be released. Amen. Hallelujah. So when God was using me to be a blessing to those people, he didn't tell me that they must come back and reward me. He said, your reward is from me. And I, the Lord your God, will reward you. So if you be kind to some people and they did not show kindness back. And so you are thinking of giving up. Don't give up. Because you are not looking to that person to reward you. So in the morning, so at noon, so in the evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to Texas, the Ghanaian community were having a, uh, they were celebrating the 6th March and we went to sit down there and then when they called me and introduced me, there were about 27 pastors on the platform from different churches and almost 25 of them said that they have sat in this local church for over one year and I was a blessing to them and I said then you folks have to pay tithes But all those people that passed through, amazingly, they were not my source. God was my source. And I came to tell you, nobody is your source. God is. Hallelujah. And with God, he can't fail you. Remember the last time I told you, if grace was given to Harry to hold it, some of you will not go. Because I first, me second, myself third, my wife next. Then my children. And then when there's left over, my friends. But the truth of the matter is, God knowing who we are, decided not to leave grace in the hands of anybody but in his own hands. And this is the difference. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when people say you are nothing, God is saying that forget it. It's me that is making the decision. Hallelujah. Amen. They say you can't make it. God is saying to you, son, it's not them. It's me. It's me. It's me. That is going to make the decision. And when God makes the decision, it's final. Amen. Genesis 18, 1 to 11. Then the Lord appeared to him by the terebinth tree of Mamre. As he was sitting in the tent door, in the heat of the day, 
So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground and said, Lord, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your hearts. After that, you may pass by in as much as you have come to your servant. They said, do as you have said, Abraham. Do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, quickly, make three measures of fine meal, knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd took a tender and good calf and gave it to a young man and he hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them and he stood by them under the tree as they ate. When they said to him, where is Sarah your wife? So he said, here in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age. And Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Amen. Hallelujah. Three men were passing by. They had no business with Abraham. They were passing by. And Abraham said, there's something about these men. And I don't want to miss the opportunity. So he went to them and begged them and said, you are strangers here. Can you please come by and eat something in my house before you go? And the man accepted, came to Abraham's house. Abraham prepared a meal, sowed a seed. And the Bible says, it was when Abraham had sowed the seed and the man had eaten, then they turned to Abraham and said, Where is your wife, Sarah? Here, she's in the tent. And the man said, By the same time next year, when we pass by, your wife will be embracing a son. And Abraham, see, look at himself he was dry he looked at his wife she was drier than dry but you see anytime you sow a seed you activate favor for your miracle amen Anytime you sow a seed, you activate favor for your miracle. Hallelujah. And so the Bible says, the Lord looked at Abraham. After, you see, listen to me, saints. If Abraham had ignored those people and they had walked away, Favor will never have knocked at his door. Amen? 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 Don't miss opportunities. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes as human beings, we try to figure out and try to give reasons. When you are doing it, 
I've had people walk into my office and they said, Pastor, I need help. And they would look at me and say, next week, by next week Tuesday, I will come and pay you. Me, myself, I know that. The person telling you that by next week Tuesday, the request he's putting in even tells you that by next Tuesday, you will not get it. Hallelujah. And so when I'm doing it, I'm doing it with one thing. Looking unto God, who is my source. Looking unto God, who is my blessings. Looking unto God, who is my favor. I thought many of you would have gotten up and sow a seed in this message. But the Bible says, the Lord said to him, by next year, you see, don't look at your situation. Act upon the word of God. And God will never disgrace you. Don't look at your situation. Act upon the word. Remember I told you the story about the woman I met at the airport. When I was at the airport, we were traveling to Canada. And there was this woman. I don't know what she was carrying, but she, was, she had excess. And I, the lady was pleading and pleading and pleading. And the counter girls would not mind her. And I felt so sorry for her. And I went over and then I asked them how much. And then I took $200. That was the amount that she was. And I paid. That was big money. And I gave the $200 to the group. I went to London, went to US and ended up in Canada. And the pastor told me that they are having a program. A Ghanaian community is having a program. They want me to go with him. And we went. We were late. And just when we entered, the pastor who was in charge was a Presbyterian minister. He was the MC. He was giving testimony about a Ghanaian minister who was so kind to his mother and we entered and we went to sit down and then the mother tapped him and said that is the man that is the man you see i learned two lessons that day if i if I, that woman i have been if mean to her she will go and tell what is it her son and then I will get you to the church in my suit, going to sit down, and then she will tell the Papa no. You get it. But she was so overwhelmed. She said she, oh, I should give her my address. When she come back, she will pay me them. I said, Mom, I gave it to you from the Lord. And here I got there before all the pastors. The pastor got up and said, Ah, the story I just told you, the reverend minister is here. That's Pastor Harry. Oh, God, God bless you. You can, you, you, you can imagine how my shoulders were so high. But when the service closed, all the men of God came there. Oh, you are a man of God. You are a man of God. You are a man of God. And some were pressing hundred dollars into my hand. <laughs> Don't miss it. Hallelujah. Don't miss it, saints. Don't let the enemy rob you of your blessings. Because somebody has been unkind to you at one point. 
Let the blessings of God come upon you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And God will never, never let the seed that you sow pass by. Hallelujah. Amen. There are three people you must always remember to sow your seed into. The needy. When somebody is in need, help them. Hallelujah. In fact, Jesus said that when we help the needy, we should give it to them not looking for what? A reward. But he didn't end there. He said, your heavenly father will reward you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You should sow in your church. So in your church sometimes your giving must be a sacrificial one hallelujah pastor was telling me when I was in uh, pastor Bismarck's church the leader of the people who clean the church it's a professor in one of the universities. And that man was in the church cleaning up. And then the pastor said, I will later on give you the testimony of this man. Where he was, how he almost lost his family, and how God delivered him. And this man said to pastor, I will never forget the fact that God gave me a second chance. And so this man organized people in the church. And he would leave the university, come to the church, and you, I saw him that day. Because when we were entering into the church, they were just mobbing the church. And then he said, this man is one of the lecturers in one of the universities here. He's a professor. And the man was busy cleaning up the church. And if you know, and you know, and you know, and you know what God has done for you, doing anything for God is not too big. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Sometimes you need to get up and then do something when nobody else is doing. Hallelujah. You walk into the church, you don't appreciate the pulpit. I say, I'm going to buy a better one because God deserves the best. Do it. Hallelujah. Do it. You are not doing it to please nobody. You are doing it to the almighty God. And he will never forget you. You see, Cornelius was kind. In fact, the Bible says that he has built a, a, a what is it? A synagogue for the people of Israel. Amen. Even though he wasn't a Jew. And as he was praying, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Cornelius, the arms you've been given, the kindness you've been showing to people, the prayer you've been saying is now a memorial. Saints, may every one of you here build a memorial before the Lord. Hallelujah. The third thing, person you must sow is the man of God. You see, to the Jewish people, giving to the man of God was part and parcel of their life. So you see it in Saul. When it, the servant said to him that there is a man of God here. Let us go to him. He would tell us where the donkeys are. You know what he said? What shall we give to him 
You see, it, so it was the Jewish culture. It was part and parcel of their life that any time they visit the home of the man of God, they go to bless him. Hallelujah. In, in Africa, it's the other way around. We go to collect rather than give there. few days ago a pastor came to the office and then blessed me and after he had blessed me he knelt down and anointed him I laid my hand upon him and then declared upon him and he left few days later his friend called and his friend said my friend came gave me a testimony he said he came and sowed in your life and this is what happened in his life. So, Pastor, where are you? When are you in the office? Because I'm bringing a double portion of that because I, I, I also want my blessing. <laughs> and that man was in my office. When I told him I was in the office, he said, I'm coming right now. He came. When you give to me, or any of the pastors. You are not giving it to us. Listen to what the Bible, Jesus said. He said, when you give to a prophet, you will receive what? A prophet reward. Now, what the Bible is saying is that it's not the prophet you are giving, but the office and the position he stands. And the anointing that is operated in, in him, you are tapping into that blessings. And when you tap into that blessings, you connect to who? Where does that anointing come from? Where does that anointing come from? Where does that anointing come from? So when you are tapping into that anointing, when we move to Bawe and then... Uh, I asked some of the people there that could you please help us to uh, connect nobody was willing to help so I had to struggle and then with the help of the church put up five poles to get light the very day the light was, connect, was connected the next morning I saw every pole you see the key was that when they connected, they connected to electricity corporation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so when you, you invest in your pastor, it's not that he is so special, but there's grace upon his life. And when you tap into it, hallelujah. God have mercy. Amen. about 20 years ago right here in this church we were praying here the church was praying the whole congregation were praying and I was kneeling there praying then all of a sudden I heard a voice and spoke to my ears as if somebody had come close to me and whispered in my ears he said, son, I've made you an elder. And I opened my eyes because Pastor Aglija was with me that Sunday. Uh, our, one of our uh, former associates was standing with me. And then I, I thought he was the one who had whispered in my ears. So I all lifted up my eyes and then I wanted to ask him what he was saying. Even though I heard the voice, Somehow, I also misinterpreted it. And then I looked at his, him, and he was standing at the corner there, praying, so I knew he wasn't the one. And I bowed my head again, and the voice said the same thing to me. And he came the third time. 
For over 10 years, I forgot about it. Until I was standing in a church. And as I was preaching, the Lord said, this time came to me and said, Son, I've come to affirm your calling. From today, whoever you bless, I will bless. So it is not us. But it's the anointing. Hallelujah. It's not me. But it is the anointing. And when you tap into that anointing, you are not making a big mistake. Let me quickly conclude. Moses asked the people of Israel to sow a seed. Exodus 35, verse 4 and 5. And Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take from among you an offering to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to the Lord. Gold, silver, and bronze. Verse 29. The children of Israel brought a free will offering to the Lord. All the men and women whose hearts were willing to bring a material for all kinds of work which the Lord, by the hand of Moses, had commanded to be done. Amen. Amen. So into the church, so into the kingdom, so into what God is doing in North Kanishi Church here. Hallelujah. You see, yesterday I was reading the whole book of Esther, and Mordecai said to Esther, You are here for such a season, and during your opportunity, if you don't use it, help will come from another source, but you will miss it. Hallelujah. And I came to tell you, every one of you here is here for a purpose. Hallelujah. Every one of you sitting here is here for a purpose. And during this opportunity, if you don't tap into it, you will lose it. Amen. But help will still come. Hallelujah. So, the Lord has given you the opportunity. Moses said to the children of Israel, Now God's temple must be built. What must we do? Bring an offering unto the Lord. And the children of Israel, the Bible says, bring gold, bring silver, bring bronze to the house of God. Amen. Now, another area that you need to sow is to sow for your protection. Amen. Numbers 31, verse 48 through 50. Then the officers who were over thousands of the army, the captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, came near to Moses, and they said to Moses, Your servants have taken account of the men of war who are under our command, and not a man of us is missing. Therefore we have brought an offering for the Lord, what every man found of ornaments of gold, armlets and bracelets, signet rings and earrings and necklaces to make atonement for ourselves before the Lord. Amen. The Bible says Israel went to war against the Amalekites. They fought a very fierce battle. Over 78,000 of the Amalekites were killed. And Israel returned. And when they returned, they brought an offering unto the Lord. But something happened. 
they have already given but the captain started counting the soldiers who were under their command and everyone com counted the troops that were under their command and not one was missing and they said well this is divine favor we watch thousands of our enemies killed and not one person was killed from amongst us it's divine favor and so the bible says they brought an offering unto the lord tap into that grace amen amen, amen. learn to tap into that grace we need to learn how to tap into that grace when our families need protection when our lives need protection sometimes the best you can do is to sow a seed into the kingdom hallelujah now we learn something also David sowed a seed. Second Samuel 24. Is it 23? It is 24. Second Samuel 24, verse 23 to 25. All these, O King Aruna, has all these, O King Aruna, has given to the king. And Aruna said to the king, May the Lord accept you. Then the king said to Aruna, No, but I will surely buy it from you for a price nor will I offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God with that which costs me nothing. So, Dave, so David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver, and David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord heeded the prize for the land and the plague was withdrawn from Israel. Listen to pastor said he was, in, he was in Israel. He was in Germany. And all the money, $17,000, the Lord told him, give it to your church. And he did. Hallelujah. Once a while in your life, you need to give a sacrificial offering. David said, Aruna said, no, what a privilege if the king walks into your house and asks for your room to sleep in. My God. I tell you what, if President Mahama said that he's coming to stay at Bawe with me one day, even while he's sleeping in, I'll be painting that room. I'm telling you. It's a privilege. Hallelujah. And the king walked to Harun and said, I want to, I want to sacrifice. And the man said, King, take everything you want. And the king said, No, I will not do that. Every sacrifice I offer to the Lord must cost me something. Is your sacrifice costing you? Or it is just the leftover? Your sacrificial giving will make a way for you. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that we must sow for the protection of our children. Hallelujah. Hebrews 6, 6 to, Hebrews 7, sorry, 6 through 10. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him 
who have the promises. Now, beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. Beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by what? The better. Here mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. Even Levi, who received tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, so to speak, for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Can you believe this? The ripple effect of your giving. Hallelujah. When Abraham was paying tithes to Melchizedek, the scripture says that Abraham was looking at his generations, my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, their success. You know what? Some of the problems we are having today were the sacrifices our fathers did many years ago. When they made those serious sacrifices and then pronounce generational, what is it? To them they said it was best, blessed but it was curses. I commit my grandchildren and all the generation into this, into Atua, Atua now. And today we are having the ripple effect the same thing when you make declaration over your generations abraham did it and the bible reveals that when abraham was blessed levi was in his loin and that generation blessings had continued upon israel today and you see the other part of it the mistake he made is continuing today. Sometimes, don't forget, you need to walk into the church with the names of your children, your grandchildren, and then sow a seed on their behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You sow a seed on behalf of your children. Abraham did. And the Bible says the blessings continue. The blessings continued. The blessings continued. Learn to sow in the life of your children. And the Bible says that don't wait. Sow at any time. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 11, 4 through 6. He who, ob who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. As you do not know which is the way of the wind, or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God who makes everything. So you do not know the works of God. Go ahead. In the morning, sow your seed. And in the evening, do not withhold your hand. For you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Amen. It happened in this church some time back. We had a preacher preaching, and then the first day he stood up, he raised an offering. Then second day he raised an offering and a few of the people came to see me and said, Sofu, we are burdening the people. So can you tell him to wait till the last day so that he can give? So I took their word. I said, okay, I will talk to the preacher so that he can wait till the last minute. The very next day, I was in the office when one of the young girls in the church walked to me. She's just 
recently got married. And she said, Pastor, I have come to bless you and also bless the church. And I, I look at her. So when she gave me, she gave me 700 euro, euros. And then she gave about 1,000 uh, euros, she said, for the church. And I almost ask her now, oh, oh. you know, sometimes we underestimate people. And then she said, you know, Pastor, you know what happened? Yesterday night when I came to church, all the money in my hand was for my school fees. It was for my uh, school transport and food. And when the man of God spoke, I felt I should go and put in the whole money. So I did, not knowing what was going to happen. She said, I went home. And my mother said to me that your brother just called a few minutes ago. He said, my brother has been gone to Europe for five years. He's never called my mother. He's never called my mother. And when the man of God was speaking, I prayed because he is the only one who can help me pay my school fees. And he's never called my mother. And when she was going to put the money in, she prayed that God, let my brother respond. She got home, the brother has called, and he said, tomorrow I am sending 12,000 euros to pay for your school fees. And when she got it, she said, I must take God's tithe and bring it. And she blessed me too. Sometimes the blessings are good. Hallelujah. You don't know when it will grow. So the Bible says, so in the morning, so at noon, so at evening. Because the ways of God are beyond your imagination. A brother said to me one time, he said, he walked into the church. And when he came here, he saw one of the young pastors. So he just took the wallet from his pocket and then pulled out some little money. He said, I didn't even count the money. And then I, I shook his hand, you know, what we call Pentecostal handshake. And you should have had something to give me a handshake. So she, she, he, he did it. When he got back to his house, he said one of his friends had done so much trouble, given him so much trouble. This man has taken his car. He won't bring the car. And he was really creating a lot of problem between him and his relationship. He said when he blessed that young pastor, as soon as he went home, the friend was there with two friends. Come to apologize gave him an envelope, and then brought his car back. May grace be released upon you, the saints. May the Almighty God cause you to be the head and not the tail. May heaven shine upon your lives. And may God cause you, members of this church, to experience financial breakthroughs in the midst of the economic crisis. May your businesses not go down. In the midst of the economic crisis, may your lives never be wasted. May sicknesses and diseases be far away from you. May the Lord God of heaven smile at you when you need his help. May God answer you from heaven. And may he remember you when situations are difficult, may the Lord God of heaven remember you. Set food on your tables. Protect your children in your lives from sicknesses and diseases. May the Lord God of heaven shine upon your lives. 
Those who say that you will never make it. May the Lord turn every situation in your life into blessing. May seeds that are not growing in your life begin to blossom with favor and grace upon your lives. May you not spend your money taking care of sicknesses and diseases. But may the Lord declare you healthy. May divine health be your portion. Your children have turned away from God. May the Lord bring them back to favor. In the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord God of heaven smile at you in a special way. We bless the name of the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, you are the Lord. Moses. 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 Oh, yes, you are the Lord. Moses. Will you stand with me right now in the yes, name of Lord. the Lord? Oh, yes, you are.
Stop. 